Hey everyone, my name is Kelvin and welcome back to another watercolor tutorial for Procreate. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a super simple, super easy uh, kind of urban sketch illustration like this one. And we're going to sketch this from a photo. So if you're in a place uh, that has some interesting architecture, you can just snap a picture with your iPad uh, and then sketch on top of that. But in this case, I'm painting from a photo I found on Pinterest. So I've already got my watercolor paper texture loaded into Procreate and uh, any of the paper textures will work well for this, but I really want to use the St. Petersburg because it looks the best on the camera. And for the brushes, I'm just going to use the abstract round brush in the regular uh, watercolor brush kit. And also I'm going to use the free scratchy pen brush kit that you probably already have uh, if you've been following my channel, but I'll also put another download link for that free brush kit in the description down below. Now I've already pasted in my image here uh, and I pasted it as the very, very top layer above the paper texture. Now before I paint, I want to make a rough sketch of the scene and it's really easy to do. I'm just gonna set the opacity just so I can barely see it there. Then I'm gonna make a new layer above that photo and I'm gonna use one of these scratchy pen brushes. Now using the scratchy liner brush, I'm gonna set the color to black and at a pretty small size, maybe around I don't know, 10%, something like that. I'm just gonna quickly kind of outline the major elements in the scene. And uh, don't get carried away with the detail. It's, it's really not important. We're just trying to cover the main uh, outlines of the main elements. So there's no reason to do any kind of fine detail. So there we go, that's it for the outline. And using that scratchy pen brush sort of forces you to make kind of loose, uh, very kind of zen-like strokes, but I love the way those lines look. Next, I'm gonna open up the layers panel and just turn off the original photo just for now and take a look at this and make sure that even without color, this scene kind of makes sense. And I think it does, I think it looks pretty good. You can see the structure here, it has some depth. Uh, so I can move on to coloring it. Now I want to use the original photo as like a color palette. So I'm going to open the layers panel, turn on that layer and just uh, raise the opacity there. So here's the original photo. I'm just going to shrink it using the uh, free form tool here, the move tool, and just make it fit kind of up in the corner like that. Just so it's big enough that I can grab colors, but that it doesn't really cover up what I'm painting. Now I want to make sure I paint down here underneath the paper texture. So I have that watercolor effect and I'm going to do it all with the uh, abstract round brush. The first colors I want to lay down are the very light background colors, uh, like these different shades of sort of slightly off white uh, and the rug there. So I'll put those down real quick uh, and then I'll add some of the more uh, interesting details. So once I've got those sort of lighter colors uh, laid down, I can grab the water blender brush and maybe in just a few places, I'll smooth out this uh, wash. Now I want to look at where my main elements might have gotten kind of ran over by that wash. So for example, at the corner of this chair, the wash kind of overlaps there and also behind the leaves of this tree. Now that's pretty light and you might be able to get away with not uh, changing it at all, but I recommend going over it with the eraser and especially just on these main elements, kind of make sure they're based on a kind of pure white background uh, without that colored wash kind of overlapping it too much. Now this is looking pretty good. So I think what I'll do is I'll make another layer and I'm gonna continue on with this process and just add some color to the other main uh, elements in the scene. And uh, if you want to, you can go through it again with the water blender uh, and just blend any areas that look more like marker than watercolor, especially down here. This is what I noticed in particular. So I think I'll blend this to uh, soften it up a little bit. So we've pretty much done all of this on two layers so far. So what I wanna do now is select the background layer, the first one that we did for the uh, kind of lighter background elements. And I wanna add some shadows that the foreground elements might be casting onto that. So for example, underneath the chair, you can see it definitely does cast a shadow onto the carpet. Also this ladder is kind of casting a shadow. So I'm gonna use the selection tool and uh, add those shadows in real quick.
So this is looking really good. We're almost done. I just wanna make one more adjustment. And this might be like a personal adjustment just for me, but it always happens that my background ends up being way too dark. So what I mean by that is this background layer here. Uh, for some reason, when I paint it, it always ends up looking darker than I want it. So I'm just gonna lower the uh, opacity here just to lighten this and make it a little bit more understated. And there we go, this one is all done and I love the way it printed out. Now, if you wanted to take this kind of to the next level, uh, what I would do with a scene like this after I painted it this way, I would draw it again, kind of in that cartoon um, Eraville style and I'd create a more detailed version of the scene. Uh, basically just using this illustration as kind of like an analysis of the scene. And that pretty much wraps it up. But as always, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.